Hi. We're going to take a look at a Dragon 32 repair. And in this instance, we're going to specifically look at the upper RAM repair. And this is on boards that have two sets of 16K of RAM. We're looking at this one because it's particularly easy to identify which chip has gone. So this really does help the repair and find exactly which chip is gone without pulling everything out or trying to work out what is going on with memory decoding and things like that. But in this machine, with a cartridge in, doesn't work. But we put it in the basic, everything looks fine. You know, so it doesn't look like there's anything faulty with the machine. But if we actually print out the memory, we look, we've got 16K of memory missing. Typically, you only get around 24K on a working 32 on start because it's reserved space for the text screen, the graphics, and also you've got over a K lost to basic, the lower part of the memory. So what we can actually do here is do some poking into the memory because we can use the Dragon as a diagnostic tool. We, we don't need anything special because the machine is actually up and running. So I've chosen 3000. That's a nice safe bit of memory. It's in the graphics area that's normally reserved and that's in the lower 16K of memory. So what we're gonna do, we'll poke in the zero and peek. So take a look at what we get back out. So this will be all the bits off. And we get back zero. This is very good. So we'll poke in 255, which is all the bits set, and see what we get back. I must apologize for this dragon. This is a project machine and the keyboard is pretty poor on it, I will admit, but that's for another day. We've poked in 255, which is all the bits set, and we'll check back on the 3000 memory and we get 255 back. This is very good. This sort of proves the memory, the lower part of the memory is working and especially we know 3000 is working. So what we'll do now is we'll poke into the higher part of the memory, into the higher 16K of memory and see what we get back at. So this is zero, this will be all the bits off and we'll peek it back out and see what value we get back. In this instance, we got 64. That looks like we've just got one bit stuck on the in the memories. Out of the eight data bits, it looks like one bit is, is actually stuck on. So what we'll do now is we'll also do a poke 255 in and make sure that we can actually get 255 out. So it'll prove all the other bits are fully working as well. We've done the zero and we do 555. That's good. That proves that all the other chips, we got one chip that looks like it's faulty on the 64, and we got everything set off apart from that one chip, and we got everything set on apart from that chip. So I'll do, I'll just do one quick more poke into the memory, just to make sure that we're getting consistent results. This time I'll poke in another single bit to turn on, which is the four, and we'll see what we get back and see if that 64, which is uh, D6, the seventh bit we'll make sure that is actually still stuck yeah it's stuck on so we've got two bits we've got the four and we've got the 64. this is circuit diagram unfortunately it's not the exact version for the machine we have as it's only showing eight memory chips in this version because this is for a much earlier board what i've done for you i've traced out the uh, data lines back to the cpu so we can be 100 percent which ones are which because obviously this is not the exact circuit diagram and there are going to be differences. This is the SAM chip. What it is, it does have RAS0, which is part of the select circuit. And RAS0 goes to the lower, the first 16K bank. And this is RAS1, which obviously doesn't exist, it's not showing on this diagram, goes to the upper top bank. This is the uh, Mark II board showing out the layout of the chips. And uh, we've got the lower 16K and the upper 16K marked out for you. And this will help you identify which chip it is. And the Mark II is by far the most common board. So we had a 64 stuck, which points to the data bit six. And in this version of the board, you can actually see that you've got D6, I37. This will be the most likely candidate where the problem is. Time to get that 40 RAM chip out, the IC37, D6. I'm gonna cut it out because I find that's the easiest way to do it on these boards. On a lot of these, uh, Mark II boards, a lot of the pins were actually folded over on the back and they're folded in different ways. Be aware of that. So if you're just using a solder sucker, etc., it can be difficult to do it. 
So you might want to try straightening, straightening the pins if you're going to try and get it out that way. If you're going to desolder it, like using a soldering gun, that's probably the best way to do it. I still, like I say, I go for the cutting because I just find it easy. There's a lot less chance of damaging the board. There are some really good soldering guides on the internet. I highly recommend you look on them up. Let's get that socket in there and get our new chip in there. I prefer to use the turn pin ones. They're much better quality. Okay, so got the socket in, soldered in, ready to go. Let's turn it on and make sure it's still working and make sure we haven't damaged anything else, pulled any tracks and see what we get. Okay, we're still exactly the same place where we were. Let's turn it off, get the RAM chip in there. Hopefully we got a good fix. If you look right at the end of this video, I've got a little section on the spec for the 4116s because uh, the main thing is is the 128 refresh cycle because the Dragon uses the video in between the CPU so you definitely need that 128, 256 will not work. So let's, uh, let's turn it on. Good, we started up. Let's check the memory, see where we're at. 24K, 2487, that is spot on. There we go. What we'll do now is we'll pop in the Dragon Diagnostics cart and we'll do a RAM check and see, make sure it's completely working. We're in the diagnostics, it's good. Let's run the uh, memory check. Memory check goes through every memory location, right in different values. Good, it's passed the RAM check, we're good to go. You can obviously just load your cartridges, load games, that's the easy way to do it. It was just to do a complete check and make sure that we're good. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful.